Hello. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. We'll get started in just a minute. All right, I'm going to give people just about one more minute and then we'll get started. Let me turn off that. All right, hello everyone, it's 12.02, so let's get started so you can get out and enjoy this beautiful day. My name's Carrie Slade, I know a couple of you from previous interactions, so good to see you again and welcome to everyone who is new. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Institute and I am your point person for the Lori Bush uh, Seed Fund. Now, um, I just wanna make sure um, we're all on the same page here because there was a little miscommunication at the beginning of the, um, when we first started sending emails. This um, competition or seed fund is for women-owned businesses or women-focused businesses. So you don't have to be a female or identify as a female uh, to be part of this uh, workshop. Obviously, you can sit in on the workshops, but in terms of the uh, seed fund, your business should either be led by women, founded by women, or serve women in a unique way, like women's health or another, another uh, product or service that focuses on women. <clears throat> I will also say if you identify as non-binary, we welcome you to contribute as well, because the goal of this fund is to give money to people who traditionally have not been given as much money, namely women, uh, and that would probably include non-binary people as well. 
Um, so if anyone has any questions about that, I'm happy to discuss that privately. But of course, everyone's welcome for the workshops and hopefully this information will be helpful to you uh, no matter uh, what your business is about. All right, so I have some slides for you, but I would love to get people to introduce themselves. It just helps me know who's on the call um, rather than jumping straight into the PowerPoint. So uh, I'd love to give, give some space for people to introduce themselves if they're willing to do that. I'm gonna to try to make you talk today. Well, well, if you don't wanna talk, I'll have to talk the whole time, but I prefer if uh, some, some people chimed in. Let's get some introductions here. Thanks, Avi. Hi, my name is Avi. Um, I'm gonna, my, I'm with Avi IT and yeah, I'm gonna be doing this uh, competition thing. Great. Naja, go ahead. Hello, my name is Naja Sadiq. Um, I'm rebranding my art business um, to incorporate social impact and help world hunger and food insecurity. So that's me. Great, great. Yeah, there's uh, no reason why business can't also make money while, while helping uh, society in the world. Other introductions. Hi, um, Leslie. Uh, sorry for crazy puppy in the corner. Um, every so often, uh, I am a founder of a sense of wonder studio and um, I'll put the thing in the chat, but I'm a artist illustrator painter illustrator um, who makes prints cards and all that sort of stuff. Great. Awesome. Love puppies. So no problem there. <laughs> Great. Anyone else want to say hi? Okay, well, let's get to, and feel free to put it in the chat. You can introduce yourself in the chat. Let's get to the slide. So my plan today, this is really about financial um, statements. And for those of you who have an accounting background, a finance background, it's probably gonna be too simple for you. I'm really here to give you the basic steps of making financial statements. And we're gonna do that by looking at one or two slides and then actually putting some numbers in financial statements. And I can, uh, uh, give you this template afterwards if you want. Um, so if you have a finance background, an accounting background, probably a little too simple for you, but um, financial statements, even I, they cause anxiety for me and I know how to do them. So it's uh, my goal is to make it seem easy and uh, you're going to help me do that. So let me uh, show the slides and then we'll get over to the uh, Excel sheet. Okay. All right, so here we are, money in, money out, financial statements and milestones. I will get to the milestones um, after this. I'm pretty much gonna talk about, show you this, the template that we provide you and talk about um, how we, we structure that. We can do an example as well. We also talked about that milestone template in the recording um, from last week. I don't think that's in the folder yet, but it should be there uh, probably by Monday. So you can check that out to learn more about the milestones as well. Okay, again, businesses that advance women in some way, either by being led by women or serving women, up to $10,000 in funding. And this is actually not a competition in the sense that there's not only one person that can get $10,000 in funding. We can fund uh, all of the finalists, probably eight to 10 businesses if we, if we choose to. So if you have very good chance of actually getting funding uh, unlike some other competitions. Eligibility, so if you raise more than $10,000 already, you are not eligible. This to be from um, venture capitalists, from investors, from winning other competitions. So if it's ten thousand dollars, you're good. If it's ten thousand and one, that's too much. And then your sales have to be less than twenty five thousand um, dollars by April of this year. Again, the submission deadline is Monday, May second. So just about a, a little over a week from now, week and a half. That's me. Um, these are some other people that I work with. I'm just giving you this information in case you want to talk with anyone else. If you have issues with the portal, any technical issues, I would contact Lindsay Clark. Uh, and my email is there. I'm the point person for this uh, seed fund, so I can answer all of your questions. Or if I can't, I will find an answer for you. So financial milestones template, again, we'll get to that uh, probably second, but that is part of your submission. The financial statements I'm showing you today, which is basically the balance sheet and the income statement, they are not necessary for the submission. 
So this is kind of a little bit over and above this. That's why it could be applicable for anyone on how to prepare basic financial statements. But the, these statements I'm talking about today are not necessary for your submission. What is necessary for your submission is this financial milestones template. So we want to know of the, if you're asking for $10,000, what are your goals to do with that money? How are you going to measure whether you reach the goal or not? What are your potential you know, tracking your key performance indicators that you're keeping track of. And then what do you, how much actually is the cost? You know, if it's a thousand dollars for a lawyer, $20 for, uh, for supplies, things like that. So that financial milestones template is part of your submission. And then these financial statements we're gonna talk about now are kind of general business and entrepreneurship uh, information. Any questions about that or anything I've said so far? Go ahead, Naja. So I wanted to know if um, we had multiple businesses, are we able to submit um, multiple times or just one time? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would be inclined to say yes, but I think I need to check with um, the other people who I'm working with, Greg and Lindsay, to make sure because um, they've done a lot of competitions and funds and they might see some implications I don't see. So I'm going to have to get back to you on that, but uh, let me write that down and I'll, I'll send it out um, you know, to people who are on this call. So let me just write that down a second. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So uh, I'll find out for you. Yeah, go ahead, Leslie. Hi, so I've had a casual business for years now and I'm relaunching it in a more professional way as an LLC. Mm -hmm. um, is that something, even though I've made pro like, some sales in the past is that something that I'm now ineligible for because I have or is the relaunch does the relaunch enable me to apply well uh first question was over twenty five thousand dollars in sales over the span of 10 years possibly not no okay so that might be an easy out but okay. otherwise I would um I think I should still encourage you to submit if it is a genuine kind of relaunch, rebrand kind of pivot, if you would, yep. um, especially because I we understand how it is if you're working on a business for years and you, you know, maybe not able to fully commit and then you finally have the time to really commit to it. So mm -hmm. I would encourage you to still, still submit. Um, I would maybe explain that because I think you have to write what year the business was founded. So okay. maybe there's somewhere you can just explain kind of the trajectory of the business. That'll that'll help us. Um, Okay. And but I'll also write that down to make sure I'll check with Greg just to totally make sure that that is acceptable. Okay. And one other follow-up question, which is that I um, I have taken a class at Temple, but I am not a degree-seeking student. Does that um, make me ineligible, or I'll ask that too. Uh, again, okay. <laughs> I I'm real flexible. I'm more inclusive uh, than potentially Temple is, so I'll have to figure okay. out. I'll have to find out about that. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, thank you. but I will contact my colleagues right after this and ask them all, all of these questions and other ones you come up with and get back to you. So thanks for the questions. All right, anything else before we keep going or anything else on the milestones template? And this information, uh, you hopefully have seen this as you uh, have gone through materials, but I just wanna share the submission folder with you. If some of you may not have seen it, which one of us? Yeah. So let me get the link and put that in the chat because this is where all the information is. Everything you need to submit and the guidelines and things like that. So come back over here, where am I here? So this is where you'll see that financial milestones template. Okay, any other questions before I move on to the financial statements? Okay, so again, I'm gonna go through two. If you if you hear background noise, let me know because there's some kids playing outside. Um, I'm gonna go through the two main financial statements. The income statement, which is usually known as profit and loss. You hear P and L, P and L, people refer to that a lot. And then the balance sheet. There is a third core statement. Anyone know what that is? Nope. 
You know, the third one is the cash flow statement. I consider that frankly not as important of the of the three. So, and I don't want to complicate it. I really want to make it simple so it's easy to understand. So we're going to focus on these two, but there is a third, the cash flow statement. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about these. It's kind of dry, but um, you'll have the slides to review afterwards, and then we'll we'll do one. So the income statement, actually, maybe we'll do we'll pick one and then do it, and then we'll come back and do the balance sheet. The income statement shows your income and expenses over time. Um, this is pretty intuitive. You have here in the second bullet, revenue minus expenses equals net income or profit. So this is the statement that shows whether you're making profit or whether you're making a loss. Hold on, I'm gonna close the window because it's not passing me. Okay. So you essentially have two categories, revenue and all the different types of revenue and then expenses and all the different types of expenses you have. So looking at revenue, there's operating and non-operating revenue. So I'm, again, I'm gonna ask you questions. You're not expected to know any of this, but I, if people know things already, I wanna give them a chance to contribute. Anyone have a guess of what operating revenue is as opposed to non-operating revenue? Okay, no problem. So that's why that's why we're doing this uh, program here. So operating revenue are is, is income, money coming in from your core activities. So let's say um, you're selling T-shirts. I'll just keep it really simple, right? Let's say you have a you have a store, you own a store, and you're selling T-shirts. Okay, so the money you make from selling T-shirts that would be your operating revenue, right? Whatever it is you're selling, your main activity. So non-operating revenue, so let's say you own a store, maybe you inherited it or you bought it or something, or it's attached to your house potentially. Let's say you have an extra room in the store and you're renting it out. Okay, so you're renting it out to someone who's got a small business, they come in, they work, nothing to do with your business, right? That would be non-operating revenue. You're making money, it's in the store where your business is, but it's not your core business. It's just some person who's renting an office from you. So that's non-operating revenue. It's not really about your core activities. It's just some other income that you have. When you get to be a larger company, you, you uh, often see non-operating revenue as things like interest. So if you're, um, I don't know, if you have investments, sometimes companies, they take their extra money and they invest it. So they don't just have a million dollars in cash in the bank. They put it in stocks or other, other investments. That interest from your investments, that's non-operating revenue. It's not really related to your core business but it's money coming in, so you have to account for it. Any questions on that? Okay, expenses. So this is you know, pretty much everything that you, all the money going out. And there's primary, hopefully you can see my mouse, primary and secondary. So similar to operating and non-operating really, primary is everything related to your core business, right? Your cost of goods sold, that's COGS there, C-O-G-S. Any sales team, any, any people you're paying. Depreciation, depreciation is when you have an asset, either property or equipment. As it gets older, it loses value. So that's an expense. That value has to go somewhere. So you account for that loss of value as something gets older. It's like an old couch. You're not gonna pay the same price for a new couch as an old couch. So that old couch has lost value. That's depreciation. Research and development. So thinking of new products, new, new designs, that's all your primary expenses. And then secondary expenses, again, similar to non-operating revenue. If you have a loan and you're paying interest on the loan, that's a, you know, a secondary expense. Any questions about expenses where we are so far? Okay, so one thing to note, uh, actually I'll go to this page uh, before I note that I wanna, let me do it in the right order. So the IRS, um, the government has like categories of expenses to help you. Cause one thing you have to do, you're gonna take your list of expenses and you're gonna, you're gonna have to put them in categories when you make your financial statement. So if we go to this um, document, <clears throat> profit or loss from business. So this is basically the, the same as an income statement, what we're reporting whether your business is making money or whether it's not making money. So, you know, you can look at all this, the income, 
that you would list your income and then look here part two expenses. And they have all of these categories, uh, lines eight all the way to 27. So you can see when you're, and this is in the slide so you can look at it. When you're making your income statement, you, get to, you have to put your expenses in categories. So you don't put, um, let's say, uh, let's say is there rent? Okay, let's say you're renting something. In your income statement, you don't, and you're paying money every month, let's say. In your income statement, you don't put 12 entries for your rent. You don't put January, February, March, April. That's for the more detailed records that you keep yourself. In your income statement, you would put 12 months rent and then times 12. So that's why you would categorize all the rent, you would lump it together into one line that says rent. So you can see some of the other categories here, commissions and fees, if you're paying commissions, advertising, insurance, if you have to pay insurance for your business, that's a category, legal and professional services, <coughs> office expenses, vehicles, repairs, taxes, travel and meals, utilities, wages. So the easiest thing to do is look at this list and see which categories apply to you and categorize your expenses accordingly. So you don't have to think of brand new categories, use the categories that the government uses. Now, if you have miscellaneous, miscellaneous is a uh, category. I don't know if it's <clears throat> this 27A, but if you have something that doesn't, doesn't fit into one of these categories, you can put it under miscellaneous. Or if it's a large amount, you may want to make your own categories. So if there's something really special to your business, you can create your own category if needed. Any questions about this list? Okay, so let me go to a financial statement that we will work on. And actually, let me go back here for just a second because one thing I want to say is there is some difference between for-profit and non-profit accounting, but the principles for these two sheets are the same, similar. So in nonprofit, so in a for-profit world, it's called an income statement or profit and loss. For anyone running a nonprofit, it's a statement of activities. So that's the term you would use if it was if you were a nonprofit. And I think the financial statements I'm drawing from are um, they're from a nonprofit I worked on. So I, I had called it a um, statement of activities. Okay, so statement of activities, balance uh, income statement. So basically you're gonna set it up like this. There's two, uh, let me move this up so we have more room. There's two large categories, income and expenses. And then right here, you subtract, right? Pretty self-explanatory, pretty intuitive. So I put some uh, items over here. Hopefully you can read them. Let me see if I can make it a little bigger for you. And if we can get a little participation, we'll see what happens. I would love to know where you would think you would put some of these uh, income or some of these uh, items here. So first, customer orders, 56, 55, 5,000. That's pretty good. Where, where do you think that belongs in this uh, statement of activities, this income statement here? Okay, let me pull up the chat. Yeah, chatting is good. Okay, Avi says income. Yes. So we're gonna put this here under income. There you go, boom. All right. Now I did, um, for those of you learning how to use Excel, I did create a formula here. So let me show you, and you can see the formula up here. So there's a couple of things you can do. I'll, I'm gonna repeat this formula for you. So in order to get, uh, to add up a row or a column, you use the sum um, command. So any formula in Excel starts with equals and that tells the computer, okay, this is a formula. And then if I do sum, S-U-M, because the sum of everything, then what I like to do is put a parentheses and then you can drag your cursor. So I want the sum of all of those columns. And then I need to close my parentheses. So I'm gonna put a, another parentheses there. 
So now I've gotten the formula of sum of B4, cell B4 to B10. And when I hit enter, of course, there's nothing else there. So it'll be 5,600 still. But if I put other lines in there, it'll add them up together. So trying to work in a couple of Excel tips here. Okay, great. All right, next one, t-shirt. Uh, let, me, let me change this, I didn't, wasn't specific. T-shirt orders, where do you think this should go? That just says income. Yes. Now, why would I separate these? I've got customer orders and t-shirt orders. Why do I have two different lines for that? Why would I want to do that? How many people know brands? They have like a, a main product and then they make t-shirts and people buy t-shirts anyway, right? It's like an extra product. So this is probably the person's main product. Okay, whatever it is they're selling, it could be uh, you know, used laptops or something, whatever it is. Maybe they refurbish and, and sell laptops. And then this is just like, oh, they have a really cool logo and someone said they'd buy a t-shirt. So now I'm selling t-shirts on the side. So you may wanna separate out if you've got different types of income. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, again, I'm gonna, edit this a little bit. I, uh, you know, this is the first time I'm doing this workshop. So sometimes I want to edit things and learn things as I'm going through it. Okay, so next one, sales commission paid. So this is sales commission I paid out. Where should that go? Like I have someone working for me, they sold $5,000 worth of orders and now I'm paying them. Yep, not just right. So in, so expenses, sales commission paid. And then I can even, I tried to give you a little more detail here, but you can even go back to the schedule and I think there's a uh, commissions and fees. So I could technically call this commissions and fees. So that's one of the categories that I, that the federal government recognizes, make it easier for your accountant. Okay, cool. Now, website fees, where should that go? Not to be a dead horse here, but expenses. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks for the chats. I appreciate it. Okay, so we'll put that in expenses. My next two, what are these? What are COGS? Someone remind us. I mentioned it earlier, but someone remind us. Cost of goods sold. Yeah, great. Thank you, Leslie. So I sold the t I sold $400 worth of t-shirts, but I had to pay for the t-shirts, right? I had to get them from somewhere and someone had to print them on. So my COGS were $75. Sometimes what we might do, we might uh, put a couple extra lines in here. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna put my main, uh, oops, that doesn't look good, one second. I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna put my main expenses up the top because I've got customer orders here. So I'm gonna put the product, the the cogs for that up top. So, so they're both at the top, right? I've got the, the actual things I'm selling and the expenses related to right at the top. You can even put a separate category if you want product expenses or sales expenses and then overhead expenses. So you can make some subcategories if you want, but I'm gonna put these here. So now I know I'm, I got 5,000 in orders and that cost me, you know, $560, $565 to, pay for the product. And then the t-shirts, I sold 425 worth, but it cost me $75 to get the t-shirts or to mail them out or something. Okay. And then graphic designer fee, again, another expense. So you can put that under here. And I think going back to this schedule here, there is a legal and professional services or there's an advertising. So depending on whether you characterize the graphic designer as a professional service or more advertising, if it was for a campaign, you could put advertising here. The government doesn't need to know like the detail detail. They just need to know the broad category of what you're spending. Okay, so I think we have all of these on here. One, two, three, five, six, seven. I think we're missing one. Which one are we missing? 
Oh, the sales commission. No, no, no. Am I missing one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Woo. All right. It's Friday. Okay, good. So we can see up here in my income. Look, my formula worked. So the total, the sum of these two, right? I didn't have to do it in my on my, you know, pen, pen and paper. So then what's going on here? This looks like the formula is bad. So let me fix this formula. Again, I'm going to do some. Yeah, because I added some lines there. So it didn't catch them all. I'm going to do some. And then I'm going to drag from here to here. In parentheses. Okay, boom. So my income was $6,080. My expenses were $1,002. Let's make sure this uh, this looks like it's, it's an improper formula. So I'm going to do my net income. I want to know, first of all, does it look like I made money here? Yeah, I made a lot of money. I made about $5,000. But let's find out exactly how much. So again, another formula equals this cell. So B11 <clears throat> minus, I'm going to put a minus sign in there, uh, B23. I don't need parentheses. I don't have any parentheses to begin with. So equals B11 minus B23. All right, $5,078. So that is a profit and loss and income statement or statement of activities. So now what questions do you have about this? What can I clarify here? Is this helpful? Is it boring? Give me, give me some feedback here. It looked very helpful. All right. Said, that. Sorry. Um, you had said something about uh, three parts, the goals, the metrics, the costs. So would. Oh, yeah. So, so let me clarify that. Um, this um, statement we're working on right now, you don't actually need to submit this for the competition. This is kind of like a, a general statement that's good for entrepreneurs to know. What you do need to submit is here in the uh, submission resources folder that I chatted out. Were you able to access that, Leslie? Okay, good. There is this financial milestones template. This is what we are asking you to do. This actually doesn't require you to do income expenses, anything like that. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna finish going through the financial statements and then we're gonna um, come back to this and I can explain this for anyone who, who wasn't on the call last time. So let's just finish, <clears throat> we'll finish the financial statements and then we'll come back to this. Okay, great. So um, before I move on, any other questions on the income statement? Okay, boom. So now going back over here to the balance sheet, the other main important financial statement for any business owner. Again, not required for the competition, but we're giving you more than you asked for here. Um, okay, the balance sheet shows a financial status at a point of time. And it really answers the questions, how are your assets funded? If you own a lot of property, you have a lot of inventory, that's great. But if you're doing it because you're taking out loans and debt that really high interest rates, that's not great. Right. So it answers the question, you know, how are your assets funded? How, what is the financial health of the company? Um, so there's three categories in this in this uh, sheet assets. This is anything that has value cash inventory. I have here a slash R. What's a slash R? Maybe we're working in retail. What's uh, a slash R? Okay, accounts receivable. So what's an accounts receivable? Okay, so this is money that you have coming in but hasn't been paid yet. So some, it's great in business if you can send product and someone pays you at the exact same time, but a lot of times that doesn't happen, especially if you're doing with, dealing with big companies they might pay you 30, even 60 days later. So if you send out product and then they're gonna pay you in 30 days, that's called an accounts receivable because it's receivable because it's to be received by you. If it is receivable, hopefully you do receive it. 
Um, and it has value, right? Because it's, it's money that's supposed to be contractually coming into you. Sometimes people don't pay. So sometimes uh, companies will discount the accounts receivable. Like credit card companies, they know some people aren't going to pay. So they discount their accounts receivable so that they to how much they actually expect to be paid. So if you have money coming in that has not come in yet, but is due to you, that's called an accounts receivable. And that is an asset. Okay. Then liabilities. Liabilities is basically any kind of obligation. So another word for liability is obligation. Whether it's debt, like your student loans that you have to pay, whether it's bills payable, like you have your, 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 com your car insurance company, they issue you the policy, the, the little card, and then you have to pay within 30 days. So that's a bills payable. You already got the benefit of the policy, but you have 30 days to pay it. So you need to, that's something that's a liability or an obligation that you have to pay in the future. Um, and then the last one is owner's equity. Money left over after expenses. So this is basically your profit. Any uh, profit or money that's left over is called owner's equity. And the reason it's called a balance sheet is because assets need to equal, so this first one assets needs to equal liabilities and owner's equity. So they, there's one on one side and two of them on one side, the other side, and they have to balance out and be the same. Uh, again, for nonprofits, it's called statement of financial position. So a balance sheet is known as the statement of financial position. Um, this, the slides will be posted and this uh, article has some pretty good information about these uh, sheets. So you can check that out if you want to read more. Any questions about what I've said about the balance sheet so far? Okay, so let's go over to our example. Again, I was working with nonprofits, so I'm calling a statement of position, but this is a balance sheet in the for-profit world. Okay, <clears throat> so same thing. Uh, we got these uh, items over here, and then we're going to populate this uh, this spreadsheet. I didn't have enough time to quite finish it out, so we might have to add one or two uh, at the end there. Okay. Um, cash and cash equivalents. And okay, and what I wanted to say is here you have assets. That's the first chunk that totals up. And then you have liabilities, and then um, net assets, really... Uh, I'll put owners. In nonprofit world, there's no owners. So you wouldn't say owner's equity, but we'll do a for-profit uh, just to keep it simple. Okay. So liabilities and owner's equity have to equal um, assets. Okay, so we have cash and cash equivalents, $7,300. Which category do you think that belongs in? Assets. Thanks, Leslie. Great. Okay, so boom, we got our first entry here. And it looks like we have some uh, formulas working as well here. So next one, fixed assets and equipment. And I put a little explanation. It's a stand for product display. So maybe I go to festivals. It personally for me with my business, I go to festivals, other things like that. So I have some things to put my products on. And those are assets. That's the equipment that if you needed to sell it, you could sell it for a certain value. So these are stands for product display, $500. So that one is also gonna go under assets here. If you owned a store, if you owned a building with a store in it, where would that go? So you got the chat here, thank you, yes. So this is any property, property, other equipment. Um, you know, usually those are the big categories. If you owned investments like bonds or stock, they would go on here as well. If the company owned investments, again, sometimes you wanna invest your extra money rather than just keeping all that cash lying around. Um, there's a distinction in Assets and liabilities as with current assets, oops, current, and um, just long-term assets. And then there's current liabilities and long-term liabilities. 
Does anyone know the difference between current and long term in both of these categories? I'm going to make these a little bigger for you. Isn't current within the year and long term outside? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, so Leslie's correct. These, um, I don't know how well you can see these, so I'm trying to make them a little bigger for you. Basically, anything in the current category is either going to be um, usable or payable within a year. So for example, and it's usually with assets means it's liquid. A liquid asset is like cash. You can go, you can write a check, you can you know, get it done next week if you need to. A property, a piece of property, a building, a, a building <clears throat> excuse me, is not very liquid. Because if you want to get the money out of a piece of property, you need to sell the property. That's a whole long process. You don't know how long it's going to take. So that's not considered liquid. That would be more like a long-term asset. So usually on the balance sheet, you list the current assets, the, the earlier ones first, and the current liabilities first. So here we have cash. So that's what we did. Cash always goes first. If you had any other Current assets. Oh, I uh, forgot an asset here. Um, you would put them here. Another uh, asset you can list is inventory. Whoops, inventory. So if you have $1,000 of inventory, you could put that there because you could sell that for something that's worth something. So inventory could also probably be um, current as well because you're going to sell, you're expecting to sell it soon. A long-term asset, something like property, bonds, stocks, some things you intend to hold for a long time, or it's not easy to actually get the cash out of it. Any questions about that? Okay, so we have our assets. Let's put in something for our property. Let's say our property is worth $150,000. That'd be awesome. Someday you have a store, store like that. And let's say we've got $20,000 in investments. So let's check our formula here equals sum B3 to B10. That looks like it encompasses everything. Uh, so we got $178,000 in assets. And of course, most of that is the property. So we don't actually have that much cash, but that property is worth a lot of money. All right, stop me if you have questions. So now we're gonna go into liabilities. Uh, and I put some up here. Oh, I think uh, we actually didn't do uh, a couple of these, but let's look at these. Oh no, actually, I think these are, all right, I'm sorry. See, this is, this is my first time doing this. I don't, wanna, I'm, I don't know what's too complicated or what's simple, but we're gonna look at these ones because these are the liabilities. So basically there are two, and this was uh, again for a nonprofit I was working on. Accounts payable. And then I wrote need to pay t-shirt supplier. So that again, this is if you have purchased something, you receive the good or the product or the service and you have a bill that you need to pay. So this accounts payable is gonna go in the current liabilities. We're gonna put it near the top because we need to pay that in the next month. So again, the current liabilities are things you need to pay within a year. So if you have a bill that's due you know, in 30 days, that goes in accounts payable and that's a current liability. And then uh, the other category we had as nonprofit were scholarships payable. So we issued scholarships to students. Um, they got the money when they actually enrolled in school. So they didn't get the money right away. They, maybe it was a couple of years even before they enrolled in, in college. Um, so we, but we need to keep that on the books and say, no, we, at some point we're gonna have to pay this money. So we have to account for that. We don't wanna spend it. And then when they come to get the money, we don't have any, we don't have any money for them. So this is more of a long-term liability. It could be in the next six months. It could be in two years when the students go to school. So um, those are liabilities or obligations that we need to account for. So here in the liabilities then, we've got um, $2,200. Any questions on those, those liabilities section? Okay. And now, I'm gonna clear out these formulas so we can do them together. The easiest way to figure out what your owner's equity is, is to subtract because assets 
are supposed to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So, um, For nonprofits, a little different. So that's why I'm zeroing these out. It's a little simpler to show the for-profit version. So basically, I'm going to take, that's why it's called a balance sheet, because assets have to equal liabilities and owner's equity. I'm going to take assets and subtract the liabilities. So I've got a lot of assets and very little liabilities, right? So that leaves me with $176,000 of equity or value in the business that I don't owe to someone else. And then these two things, again, the liabilities, I'm gonna put B17 plus owner's equity, they are adding up to the same as the assets. So this has to, this and this have to match. Questions about what I'm doing here? So would you say this business is in good financial shape or not good financial shape? Probably good financial shape. Yeah, great. Thanks, Naha. Uh -huh. And then what if, so let me change it up on you. If you had a loan, you have this property here, you know, maybe you had it in the family, maybe you had cash for some reason, but let's say you, you had a loan, right? So that was $140,000. So hopefully our formulas will help us out here. So right now, even though assets are still 178, if you look at the owner's equity, it went way down because the liabilities went up. So the more obligations and liabilities you have, the less value actually the business retains because you owe all these people money, right? So that means the less profit you actually have in the business's assets and accounts. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, what other questions do you have on these um, before I move on to the milestones worksheet? We're good. Okay. So let's go to the milestones. Um, I will put this worksheet in the folder so you can clean out all the um, examples we use and you can use it as a template if you want to. Again, these work, this, um, these two sheets are not required for your submission. They may be required for other submissions in other competitions and they are, but for this particular submission, it's not required. Okay. Cool. So here we are in the milestones and metrics file. This one is required. And I did go over a little bit of the template last time. So let's do an example and we'll um, do it in the blank template. I'll copy this. So let's see. Okay. Someone give me uh, a cost Someone who has a cost they're considering submitting for, someone tell us about that cost or that uh, item they wanna pay for with this money. What's something you might spend this money on if, you, if you're awarded it? I know at least a couple of you are planning on submitting, so you must have some idea, okay. Okay, Thank transportation you, inventory, okay. So, uh, Let's do, let's do inventory. Then if we have time, we can do transportation. So you might, uh, so let's say, Nanja, you wanna buy um, a total of, let's say a thousand dollars in inventory. So the total cost, you can see here, we have a timeline, one month to um, one year. Cause we think you'll probably spend most of the money in one year. If you are gonna, if you get $10,000 and you're gonna spend it over the next two years, you can add a couple more columns and expand that out. So purchase $1,000 in inventory over the year, okay? Now, you may not purchase that thousand at the, all at once, right? 
So you might purchase 500 at month one and then 500 at the six month mark, right? So you can put that in there. So I'm gonna spend $500 a month one, then I'm gonna spend another $500 in six, at six month mark for the total costs over the whole year of $1,000. Okay, great. Stop me if you have questions on that. Now, Naja, what is, why do you want to purchase that inventory? What is your goal with purchasing that? To sell it. Okay. So the goal, and I think we had put the goals in, uh, in this column here. So increase sales to sell, to enable, okay. Increase inventory to enable additional sales. Okay, great. So that's the general goal. It doesn't have to be too crazy, right? You want to sell more. I need the money so I can purchase inventory. I have customers waiting, but I don't have the inventory, okay? Now, sorry to put you on the spot, but thanks for volunteering. Naja, how are you gonna, uh, what are some of your sales goals? Like how much money do you want to make on this? And you can you can make something up. Um, per month or in- Like how much, what percent profit do you think you want to make? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. So let's help you out. Let's see. If, let's see if you can make like 50% profit. That would be awesome. So that can even be a goal, uh, sales and profit, right? So then the reason we're taking the metrics is because we want to get a little more specific. So we know at the end of the year, whether you met the goal or not. So it's really easy to sell more. You can, if you sell one more, that's still more. But how do you know, is that like, a, is that successful? Is one more enough? So metrics, let's say um, profit margin of 50%, 50%. Let's say um, gain 10 new customers, let's say. So those are the specific things I want to accomplish. I want to increase sales. I also want maybe want to increase who I'm selling to. I want to get new customers, not just selling to, to repeat customers. So if I had a profit margin of 50% and that um, we can explain that if you want. Let's see if anyone knows how much would she make in profit if she had $500 in inventory? Let's say she sold that at, at the three month mark. She sold all of that. How much, how much profit would she have? What, what would her total sales have been? Let's see if anyone can figure that out. 450. Um, no, not quite. I think it's uh, a little different than that. So I think if we have 50% profit, that would be 500 which is our inventory times 0.5, so that's 50%. Oops, I didn't put an equal sign there. Did I say 450 or 750? Um, you said 450, did you mean 750? Yeah, exactly. So this would actually be the profit, which means you would sit you the sales would be sales of 750 profit, profit of 250 right so those are then at three months you can say okay do i have 750 in sales that means i would have 250 in profit right so that's real clear for you to say yes or no and of course things happen maybe the inventory was late maybe you sold it for more than that um it doesn't mean that you're a failure if you don't hit those metrics it just gives you something to measure yourself by so then if we continued that coming out here. So when she, let's say at one year, so we, we're buying the additional inventory, then she sells it all by um, the one year mark. So we're essentially saying another more sales of 750, more profit of 250. So at the end of the year, the sales would be 1500, whoops, with 500 profit. So those would be an example of goals and metrics. What questions do you have about this or how can I make this easier for you to understand? Or, and we can do another one if you want. People good with this? Yeah, okay. So it's 1253. We have um, 
couple more minutes, you are free to go. But at the same time, if you have questions, you want to dig into something a little more, I'm happy to do that. Um, I, can, I can sit with you for a few minutes to do that. Um, I think some of you might want the QR code. Is that right? Let me see if I can find that. Uh, okay, I think it's about right here. All right. There's the QR code for this if you're looking for that. And if you have feedback, uh, please give me feedback. Again, as I said, this is the first time I'm going through this. I'm, I'm not a finance major, I'm not a finance person. So this is how I made it simple for myself to do my own financial statements. So uh, if you have any feedback, anything that was confusing or that could be done better, I'd be happy to get that as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing this so I can see you all. Uh, thanks for coming. And again, if anyone has other questions, I'm happy to uh, engage or answer other questions. These slides and the recording will be posted in the submission resource folder um, probably by Monday. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question. Yeah, and I'll get back to you with those questions, Leslie. Yeah, go ahead, Naja. So you said the two, so everything you went over today is not a part of the submission or it is? The first two examples you're doing are not, but then the milestones that the last example with the inventory is, yes. Okay. Yeah, but okay. those are good for any business just to have. So, you know, if not today, then hopefully in the next couple of years, it can be helpful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I saw the link, I'm looking at the folder of all of the different files and stuff. Mm -hmm. So everything there, I'm not sure you said something about a, a meeting before that I must, I must have missed about it. Yeah, we um, had another of these workshops last Friday, but the um, the slides are in the folder and then the, the recording will be in there as well. So I think it's in the, um, one It's in the, there's a uh, folder workshop slides and recording. So if you look there Monday, the, the two recordings should be in there. Okay, and that meeting was detailing like everything that's required and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that had more, yeah, it was more of an overview, yes. Okay. Yeah, so if, right. you, if you look at that after you have questions, if you have questions, just let me know. Okay, thank you. All right, sure. Hey, I have a question about um, the, okay, for the slides. Uh, one second. 